Hi, hi everyone. Welcome to this talk. Uh, good to see you at this time. I hope that you don't get some sleep here. <laughs> so sleepy. Um, well, let's. Are you ready to start? I'm ready to start. So let's start. Honestly, uh, as an open source developer, what is the first time that you used to think when you think in Microsoft? It's, this is the first thing that you, you just like. What? Yes, yes, I am in Microsoft. I'm working uh, to Microsoft. Let me just continue. And about me, I'm Jessica Perez. I'm from Mexico. Yes, those that we are now so worried about those, this great wall. Uh, I have been working as a Java developer since now. I think that it will be like 10 years or more. So I'm not a .NET person, not Microsoft technology, just cloud. But but now, now uh, talking about Microsoft, now Microsoft change. Uh, there is uh, one of the proof is that I'm a Java developer and I'm working with Microsoft. And as well, another thing that I would like to say is that uh, Microsoft is uh, now working with a lot of uh, deeply, deeply engagements with uh, Node.js communities and Linux projects as a contributor. But I'm not here to talk about this, at least not now. I'm here just uh, to show you a demo. And um, as this slide said, that this is first and foremost a cloud and DevOps demonstration, and that's all. And I'm not here to explain it, what is DevOps. I'm not here to explain what, uh, what are the DevOps de benefits why you should do it, why you should not do it, uh, and why, why you should have it, and why you should not have it. I'm just create this demo because I was attending a lot of uh, conferences, and in all the conferences, uh, talk about, and all the talks talk about that, why do it, why not do it, uh, how it looks like, but it never showed it how it really looks like, and I just decided to create it, and let's and show today to you how it looks. But first, of, of course, some explanations. Why cloud and why DevOps? Because it's a natural fit. It's, it's a, I just uh, was looking for the four more uh, key points, at least uh, for me, for why I do it this cloud and DevOps uh, join. And one is the business ag agility, of course, because all, all of us, we want to just uh, have uh, functional software as soon as, uh, as soon as possible we, we can. And the other is uh, automation. Why? Because both of them uh, allow us to have uh, this uh, This, uh, sorry, I'm a little nervous. <laughs> they enable to have this, this uh, all our code, all our infrastructure as, as code, and all the, all the things that we can uh, recreate and, and do it uh, automatically. Both of them talk about that. And flexibility, flexibility, because now we can choose between how we can uh, really implement or or cloud partners, or or cloud, or, or DevOps uh, practices, and then finally agnostic, yes, agnostic, because DevOps and cloud partners uh, patterns are not uh, related or not directly related with a vendor, not with Microsoft, not with Amazon, not with whatever. There are not because there is just like a a different thing, the technology, than the concepts. And then 
This demo is about that uh, continuous integration and continuous uh, deployment. And of course, uh, as you know, this morning I was listening in a talk. Uh, why? How we can measure these these things? And of course, it's the 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 deployment lead team that that we can measure, and then uh, the time to recover from a fair and we can do it uh, 24 times faster than the teams that now are doing uh, this combination between cloud and between DevOps. And of course, it's, uh, another thing that we can do, uh, that we can measure about this is uh, the time about that we, that we can deploy it. We, we, can, we can deploy it more, more easily and more faster. And as well, the other thing that is another uh, just concept, it's about the continuous de deployment. That it's just this practice is just about that uh, releasing a good build into final uh, product for our users, and that's all. And and it 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 uh, the cloud and the DevOps combination will have a, uh, allow us to to deploy it. 200 times higher than if we are not doing anything of, the, of those practices. And okay, but this is just the theoretical things that I will talk. And now I want to talk uh, to show you how exactly those agile look. This is uh, about the demo. It's just like show you how exactly it 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 uh, what we have. And as we see. Uh, in develop, we have just uh, the development uh, cycle with a step, sorry, using Eclipse and committed directly to a GitHub repository. Then we are using um, a job in, in Jenkins that with this we are creating the, the build, the test, and we are package a Java application. And this is deploying in OpenShift Cloud. And then we release with this uh, this package. We we are releasing to uh, Azure Cloud in a Docker container uh, that is deployed in Ubuntu. And exactly the flow, how how what is uh, this workflow? It's about this. First, uh, the developer, I mean I, will uh, commit and push to my GitHub repository. Then it will start this job that is first, uh, as I said before, it's a Jenkins job that is deployed in OpenShift. First, will be, first it will be the first step will build, then we'll run a test, then we'll, we'll package, and then we will get a Word file, and this Word file will be published in OpenShift. Then I'm using uh, this uh, orchestrator that is uh, Visual Team Services. And with this, I will copy this Word file directly to the my machine that I have in, in Azure, that is a, an Ubuntu machine. And then I will run a Docker image. This Docker image is uh, just a Tomcat. And then I will run another command that uh, I not will run it uh, manually. Uh, it will uh, run automatically and it will deploy this workflow in another in the container that in the previous step uh, deployed. And this is exactly the workflow. We will do it uh, and then a few times. And I just want to show you how, how looks the job in OpenShift. This is the, the job that we uh, that I have and this is uh, connecting directly to my repository. And this is just uh, the build and the post-build steps in this job. And this is how it looks. I will show you uh, later. And this is uh, the Docker configuration on Azure. This is my machine. I have a, a one virtual machine that has uh, Ubuntu. Then I have the Docker. I have an interface, this is uh, very important. And in, in Azure, we have like this kind of extensions that uh, this time is Docker, Docker extension. The, the name of the machine is Docker, and you can see the, that 
It's not showing too much details, but I will show you later. And it's just to show you how it looks. And then this is exactly the, the configuration in the Docker machine. And then this is the uh, BSTS configuration that I'm running and the image first, and then I run it, uh, I'm running the, the image, and then I build it, the image. And I'm running a Docker command. And that's all. That's all that I that I doing with the help of these uh, tools. But now it's uh, demo time. I will show you. First, uh, I am using, uh, yes, you can see this this uh, this tool that is booty. And I want to show you this machine. This is uh, yes, this is uh, the Azure portal. This is my machine. And this is the IP address. And then, as you can see, I will open this uh, connection that is directly to, as well, this the, the, the same machine, as you can see, the, the, the IP. Then this is BSTS, where I have my uh, this orchestration uh, configured. Then I have the builds. And then I have the, those are the steps that I must do. I will show you the steps that are, that previously I, I talk. First, when I commit to my repository, start this step that is a queue, a Jenkins job. That means that I trigger the, the, the job. Then it will download the, the artifacts. And then I will publish these artifacts uh, to get it. Then this is my OpenShift account. I'm, as you can see, I'm using the, the free account. That is, everyone can use it. And I'm using this, this uh, domain. And this is my application. I just using a template that OpenShift has. And this is my Jenkins that previously Jenkins job that previously show you and just is the same and those are just uh, two different uh, browsers that I want th that you see that is not running actually because I don't have anything de deployed now then let me show you can you see yes I that you can see. And this is uh, the machine that I already have. As you can see, I just have one container. Can you can you see? Yes. I have just one container. And it's a Jenkins that was created seven weeks ago. And the last time that run was 12 days ago. And it's in the port 80 deployed. And I, that's all that I have now. Then this is my Eclipse. I was recording a video just in case that the Wi-Fi doesn't work. I just, as you can see, it's just a Java web application. This is just a, a GSP page. I will write. Hello from the talk in the box. I just will save. I'm using, actually I'm using the, this is just a tutorial that I fork from GitHub. Just a simple application, but you can use it with whatever Java application that you have. I'm using the plugin with GitHub to commit directly to to my repository, and you say the talk one. Okay, I'm, go I'm going to commit and push. Then we'll set okay. And then we I will go to Jenkins just to see if when it starts. It's a start now. 
And as well, if I check it in BSTS, in builds, I will see that this is one build in progress. Okay. And let me open it. You can see that it's here. Okay, it's running and it finished the build. But then I need to go to releases because there are two steps. One is the build and the other is the, the, the release. And where is it here? Release 31, that is it running. And then I will just run it again, my docker ps command. And then now I have it, another uh, container that, uh, as you can see, is here. It's here. Okay, and runs eight seconds ago. And it's in the port 88. This is important because since you are using, a, I, you are already using the, or I am already using the port 80. Now we we need to to use a, forward it to another uh, port, and this is 88. And then is 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 this. And now what happens if you want to to deploy another container? You can run as you know whatever container you want. But first, I you can automate this step, but I would like to show you manually but how it looks. This is uh, the steps to the release. First, as you can see, I have the run an image command and then a run docker command. This run, run uh, docker command, it's here. It's just, uh, this is a variable that I have for the container name, and this is another variable that is help me to forward it, the ports that I am doing. And I will, since I have three different environments, the testing, staging, and production, I'm just using now the test environment. I can change it, the, variable, the variables that are configured. I will change it for 89. I will change it for 87 and then just say OK. Then I will save. Or change. Let's it save now. And then I can run it again. Import 87, again save. And then just check if it really starts. Okay, here is the other, uh, it already start. And then ju we just need to wait that the build and the release uh, finished. It finished. Finished the build. And then I'm going to release. Um check it if I really finish. Uh, yes, it runs. And again I'm going to check my it's not it's not deployed yet. It said that it's running. Uh, it's here. As you can see, there is my second that is in this port, eighty eight seven. And then I will check it here with eighty seven. And that's all.
this is very important about the ports because at least when I was starting to work with the with the, the containers and in the cloud, when you work in your own machine and you have your, your Docker machine in your own uh, laptop, it works fine. But then when you have this another piece that is the, the cloud, you must be very careful to configure all those keys and all the SSL keys, all the TLS keys and all the ports. And now at the beginning I show you the how is structured the this machine in the cloud in Azure Cloud and I'm using a security group and in this security group as you can see I must to have all the ports that I will be using because you can you can deploy it and you will not find at your deployed and your release will run fine but the thing is that you will not allow it to see it as you know because you must to configure this room and then I will show you uh, the 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 next few slides then what is the the conclusion of this uh, or the conclusion at least that I have of this uh, this demo. First is that it, it, it will be built very fast if you do the correct steps as well. I'm, I'm, I'm no, I don't know you, but I'm sick about that this tutorial that it said that this step and this step and then when you, you try it, it's not wrong. And then you decide to do it manually and then uh, it will not work and you are not doing properly this uh, DevOps, DevOps practice. And then it will uh, help you to catch the bugs if you automate all those uh, uh, integration and, and deployment. And then, and then you have very quick the software working. And th your releases will be very low risk. But as well, another, uh, and I think that is the most important, at least for me, and I, I want to tell you that, the, that you can use your cloud providers, it doesn't matter what are your pro cloud providers, as a complement to each other. And you must use it, your <clears throat> the tools that you have in your hands, because why? Because as a developers, it happens a lot of uh, times that you want to, Configure by yourself, configure by hand, all the things. And of course, this is fun and this is uh, better if you want to learn and understand exactly what you are doing. But the other thing is that if you are, have a pro cloud provider and the cloud provider I already, already have those templates, you should to use it because it's quick. It's the quickest uh, way to enable whatever you want enable and then uh, there is no there is nothing wrong to use uh, those templates even openshift uh, has these templates uh, you can use it as well uh, once that you already done with this kind of uh, uh, workshop demo whatever then you can do uh, go in details. You can use uh, start to work in the connect directly with the with the uh, with your machines that you already have deployed. OpenShift has uh, those clients to that is not beauty that they are the, their own to look in their in their gears that that they provide to you for free. You don't need anything that uh, as. Azure has uh, uh, your credit card to start to work in that, at least not with OpenShift. You don't necessarily have to use uh, BSTS. This time I use BSTS because it's the tool that I, I have. But of course you can do exactly the same. And I'm talking about this part. You can have the these uh, three steps that are in the middle. You can. You can use, easily you can use it uh, Jenkins instead of BSTS, just to continue to work with all, all open source. Uh, but that is about the, the options that the cloud, that your cloud provider are 
offer to you. And I extremely suggest that, that, that you should uh, use it in this way to do or to get uh, functionality uh, more, more, more fast. And then as another thing that I would like to say is that uh, why, why, why can't complement it? Because most of the time, uh, if you want some specific, uh, for example, uh, uh, configuration or template, and probably OpenShift doesn't have, or probably Azure doesn't have, you can take whatever, uh, or even Amazon, that they probably they have, or they have uh, different things that you can use it. But not necessarily you must be buried with one cloud. You can use it whatever cloud you want. And then uh, these tips, little tips and tricks that, as I said before, take advantage of your subscription. Then take care of your configure your security rules because this is. I I have been running a lot of workshops, and the people as. The, the step that you will be stuck will be the security rules. And the second, it's the security configuration. I think that those, uh, the, the three of, of the, the three last ones are, of course, the most uh, complex and the most easily steps to be uh, stuck when you are working with clubs. And of course, this is, this is a problem, but but you must learn about that. I extremely suggest that please don't look at the tutorials and copy paste the comments. Why? Because when you do that, you must copy the error that someone else uh, picks it later than it ends uh, this blog. And then you will start to look it in another blog and then it will be like, like crazy to start to, to find uh, this uh, solution. And then you will, you will be disappointed because because you are not uh, you will thinking that you are not doing the correct steps but it's not about to do the correct steps it's about to read co properly and don't copy paste the uh, the comments that are in 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 the blog post and then there is uh, some resource resources that that I would like to show you Uh, no, I don't, I want to show you, but I can't. Okay, this is one of them. This is uh, our repository. Then is uh, the demo that I already showed you. It's here. All those steps that you can follow and all those, uh, an introduction, what is, uh, what you will need and how to do it, every of these steps. You can follow it if you want it. And then another uh, thing that I would like to to mention as a resource is, is the the report that that Puppet uh, Labs uh, released. That uh, here you will find a lot of uh, good uh, um, facts about. DevOps and about uh, how many times uh, you are increased your, or at least the average of the world that are using this uh, DevOps uh, strategy, it's better or why, and why you are more faster and why you cannot be more faster. I think that the time goes so fast and I was so fast, but I think that is uh, it's everything for me. And I don't know if you have uh, some questions I would like or some feedback, uh, good and bad. Uh, but if you have, uh, please uh, write to me and I will answer your, your questions. And thank you for coming and enjoy your evening.